we got to get it out the way, guys. We got to get it out the way. Um, it's painful, but we 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 got to do it. You know, sometimes you're a statue, sometimes you're a pigeon. That's the old saying, and uh, I think yeah. we know which which side of that equation we fell on. Um, before we get into it, a um, couple of things I just want to do right off uh, straight out of the gate. Um, you know the drill. Uh, put this on your social media platforms. Time really is of the essence. Um, this is for Isla, and you know she's. You know the score with her. Um, just copy and paste this. You'll find this in the description below, YouTube and Facebook. Put it on your social media platforms. If you've got a couple of quid, you can sling in the tin. You've got the Just Giving link there. There's no donation that is too small. Every donation will make a difference. Please give generously. We all, as always, thank you very much indeed for your support on this matter and please don't forget to like comment on and share the stream subscribe to our youtube channel hit the bell icon for alerts and new content and as always thank you for your support also i have to say because i'm i'm mindfully aware that there are some people and i watched gonzo's video this morning um so i have to say to anybody what uh, that's about to sit down and watch this either live or at a later stage this is a a, a post-match review of the match that took place at the Emirates yesterday. It's got nothing to do with the previous however many games. It's got nothing to do with our aspirations for the rest of the season. We're just focusing on the match that took place yesterday. So whether we're fifth now or whether, where we're going to finish at the end of the season, completely irrelevant. That's nothing to do with uh, with this. So, Duke, talk to me. Um, what happened? Uh, just quickly, before we go into that, I've got underneath you here. Um, I have uh, Liverpool versus Newcastle. Mm. And uh, Liverpool have just equalised, Diego Jota. Um, okay. I'm telling you now, Mike Dean is a hand pumper. <laughs> Baller to Liverpool. Balls come in. Two Newcastle players go up for the header. Yep. One goes down like a stack of shit because he's been headbutted as he's gone for the header. Yep. Um, it's a head injury. He's laying on the floor in the middle of a six-yard box, prone as it looks like it was Lascelles, possibly. Prone as, prone as shit, laying in the middle of the floor, uh, not necessarily moving. That's, that's yeah. horrible. Oh, that is horrible to watch again. So they play on, the ball goes out wide, Mane puts it in, Jota gets up. Good save, I think it's from Dubravka. Yeah. Um. You know what? I'm not... Oh, yeah. No, I'll tell you what it is. It's Isaac Hayden. And as Canate's got up for the header, and as Canate's... As, as they're coming down from the header, yep. Canate's got his elbow out, and he hits him in the temple on Isaac mm. Hayden, which for me is... Um, which is even more of a, a situation. So he's actually... It's not even had by his own player, Sharky. He's actually been um, elbowed in the temple um, mm. on his way down by Canate, which that's obviously a dangerous place to be hit. Very yeah. soft part of the skull, isn't it? So he's mm. laying prone on the floor. It's gone back out to the right. It's been whipped in by Mane. Good cross, don't get me wrong. Jota's has got up, good save by Dubravka, and then he's obviously then tapped it home. And obviously Newcastle are in absolute uproar now because obviously... It's a head injury. He's laying on the yeah. floor. He, I, to be honest with you, at the time, I didn't even think he was moving. Um, and I... Oh, it's, it's one of them. Um, Why do I so get Max, the feeling you're trying to avoid talking about yesterday? No, no, no. Listen, I, I, I had my part yesterday, <laughs> didn't I? I, 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 said, I, said my, um, I said my piece pre-COVID. For those of you watching that don't know, um, I am actually suffering from um, COVID. I woke up this morning rough as shit. Um... Did, did two tests. They've both come back um, positive. Done me PCR test. But I just, I, I've got I'm full of it. It feels like I'm full of a head cold. Everything is like compressed. Foggy is the only way I can describe it. But yeah. that being said, like I say, I had my say on it last night, Rob. And, you know, for the first half, I felt that we we started all right. We defended well. I was in a pub yep. full of Arsenal fans, obviously. Yeah, that and must have been interesting. Started, started well. And we defended quite well, you know. Fab had a couple of saves. I mean, yeah. the, the one he put onto the crossbar was was very much outstanding. Yeah. Um, and it's now two one Liverpool Mo Salah. Uh, Ooh. Um, you know, pushed it onto the crossbar. I think from Tierney. Yes, it was. Yes. Um, you know, him and Dawson. I think both had 
relatively good games up until they had the really good games. I thought Diop played um, well as well. You know, it's two foul and Dawson. Yeah. Dufau and Dawson, I felt, were slightly to blame for the goal because they didn't read the pass and the run yes. from Martinelli. I think he kind of taught them split in two minds. I think Dawson not looking at the ball, he's thinking Dufau's going to go with him. Dufau looking at where Dawson was, he's thinking that Dawson's going to go with him. Neither of them do it. And, and obviously... But that being said, first half, first, I'd say 15 minutes, I thought was all Arsenal. Arsenal mm. um, dominated possession. I think then the next 15 minutes, we were not necessarily the better side, but mm. we got back into the game, Rob. We played some good football, got the ball down on the deck for probably the only time in the game. As I said last night, a lot of long balls or balls, you know, fired into Antonio, who, again, mm-hmm. I'll cover that in a bit. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. that'll be the entire video on that. Um, and I thought first half, you know, 15, there were 20 minutes for them, 15 minutes for us. And in the last 10 minutes of the first half, I felt Arsenal were on top again. Yeah. Going in at half time. Now, again, I don't think we played badly in that first half. I do think we were lacking potency. Yes, definitely. Something believe... was missing up front, wasn't it? Oh, massively, mate. And listen. But do you, you know, think I... looking at looking at the starting lineup is is that as strong as what David Moyes could have put out? Or do you think he he missed a trick somewhere? I mean, I, I personally think that the, the, the player that we really missed last night was Aaron Cresswell because for a number of reasons, because it would have allowed David Moyes the facility to, if he wanted to, to go with either four at the back, three at the back, five at the back, whatever. But it also Listen, would have given him an extra play. With the bench, Sorry? He had that facility to do that on the bench. He could have bought on another centre back and pushed Sufal before the centre yeah. back and Max further forward. Now, two things. First half, Sufal's yellow card, right? Yep. I'm moaning and ahhing over whether I think that's the yellow. Now, Dermot Gallagher, I believe, is the guy that does the ref watch on Sky. He is, yes. He he felt that the yellow card was. Um, was was the correct decision. And at the time, I have to say, I was a little bit hard done by. <coughs> I've watched it again several times. And now, yeah. and then I felt, no, you know what, fair enough. And now I'm back the other way. I'm, I'm feeling that I'm incredibly pissed off with it because anywhere else on the pitch, players putting their arms out doesn't necessarily result in a yellow card. Okay. Mm, depends in on the, the ref, pitch. doesn't it, though, sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I've seen them yeah, given. yeah. yeah. Um, and and I, I, I feel slightly hard done by with it with a first yellow card. Now, that yeah. being said, you know, go back to plan B. He could have quite easily bought on a sub. You know, was was one of the was one of the lads on the on the bench back taste or no. No, it was a Les- were, were, the three no, youngsters were Alessa, Ashby and Oco Flex. So he could have bought one Alessa. Yes. He could have bought one of their say. He could have pushed Mass further forward. Um, he could have pushed too far slightly forward before the um, uh, before the sending off. And and he could have had a, a plan B. He, it was there for him. He could have done so. And you listen, we all know my feelings on Mass being allowed in our box now or in our arse. We all know that. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, he had the option. Why he started him at left back when I personally think Longello is the better option. It's neither in nor there. He decided to play him and do what he did. Um, mm. If I may digress slightly, mm. and I only say this because I've just seen the young right backs there, Tommy Asu's, I've just seen his name on there. For those of you who are in the chat, and there are 10 of you right now, which is good. Tell your friends. There were a couple of gentlemen in the West Ham end yesterday that have been added on Twitter oh, and across Facebook for their disgustingly racist behaviour yesterday. Oh, this is this has escaped me, I've got to say. Pissed up in the ground they were. Right. Um, shouting racist obscenities. Again, I, I, I use them to give it context. Um, I believe one of them shouted at... Lacazette, fuck off back to Lagos, you can't. 
Uh, last time I checked, checked Black Z was French. Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, you know, it's not African, so you know I'm not being funny. There's a direct little in there. They were screaming, uh, you know, using using racial slurs, black cunt, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. They, they they were used yeah. in the game, um, calling uh, quotes Tommy unquote. Asu, yeah, quote unquote, calling Tommy Asu, uh, a Chinese uh, again. He's uh, Japanese. So, you know, and then there was a lot of stuff that I saw on Facebook, um, uh, sorry, on Twitter, trolls. Oh, that were unfortunately, there's a lot of that, Facebook. though. Not West Ham trolls. I hasten to add, they were not West Ham trolls. These were okay. these were profiles with a skinhead, um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, and the name was, was United Fan 10 or something, okay. saying, how can you say that calling him Chinese is racist when he's from that part of the world and I'm sitting there going, you keep digging, mate. Keep digging. The fact that he said that um he, you know he, the how he's how he's telling uh Lacazette to go back to Lagos um racist. Um you know it's a country not a um you know not a race thing and I'm like mate stop because you you you're really you're showing your colours right now. Um, what I will say is I cannot and will not condone any of that shit. So if any of you guys in the chat, nine of you now, so someone's disappeared, not happy with what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, nine of you in the chat, if you do know of these people and you know, uh, listen, I'm not asking you to be a narc. I'm not asking you to be a grass or anything else. But listen, these people bring um, shame and a bad reputation on, on our club. And... Um, We, we don't have the best, um, essentially, reputation when it comes to that coming out of the 80s, shall we say, in the 70s, when it was the, yep. uh, when we were the ICF and all the rest of it, mm. or GSE. Which, which was quite that. ironic when you stop and think that considering... one of the members was Cass Pennant. Yeah, I mean, listen, I've, 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 read, his, I've read the book, I've, I've seen, the, the, seen the film. Uh, mm. you, you see where that starts, you know. Um, is it outside the pub and he's called the N-word? And, and the big big fella turns up and smacks a geezer in the mouth and says he ain't one of them. He's West Ham, you mug. Let him in. And it's, you know, listen, uh, my 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 nan, my mum's mum, knew Cassie's mum. Cass actually went to my primary school. I was going to um, say, because he was from sort of like Slade Greenway, Slade wasn't Green. he? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, obviously, there's, there's a few years between me and Cass. Don't get me wrong. So, I didn't go to school with Cass. But... He was at my primary school. Um, I went to the same primary school. Um, you know, these guys need to be at it. And the person that, that, that put it on Twitter and then obviously on the Facebook, I, I commend you, sir, whoever it was, if you're in the chat, whatever else, I commend you. These people need to be named and shamed. Um, it's absolutely disgusting. Um, yeah. Um, mate, I, yeah, it's fucking ridiculous. Um, um, these people have no place in our club in our fan base, you know, at our games, needless to say. So if anyone does know of these people, you know, I, I suggest you maybe want to distance yourself from those people um, because, you know what, in, in no way, shape or form, is it's right. But back to yesterday's game in a good sense. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, so getting back to the, to the, to the match itself, Duke, um, where did it go wrong? Well, oh, sorry. He, that's <clears throat> all right, mate. Don't apologise. Uh, it, it went wrong, mate, because we didn't have a plan B. And I think, um, I think it was sort of like it went wrong because our attacking quartet, only one of them was, was functioning from where I was sitting. Go on, are you, are you, are you pinging that at? Uh, well, I think Jared Bowen was the only one of the, of the front four. Yeah. That I can, in all honesty, say, possibly you could possibly say Lanzini didn't have a bad game because, and I'll come to it later. His yeah. his ball retention was absolutely superb, but in terms of sort of like a penetrative um, impact on the game, it, that was rather lacking. I think it's fair to say. Yeah, doing Pete. Oh, you will. Um, words and pictures. Yeah, that was that was announced around about quarter to seven UK time. Uh, that the game against Norwich at London Stadium on Saturday has been postponed. Here we go again. 
Listen, I, I thought I thought we were toothless, Rob, at times. Um, I did. Again, you know, balls were pinging in to um, Antonio, who had the touch of... Um, listen, he's got the speed of an antelope. Yep. Okay? Unfortunately, yesterday, he also had the football skills of one. Yeah. <laughs> um, his control was absolutely shocking. You know, balls that were being pinged into him. And again, you can say it was the quality of the ball into him, but his first touch, it was bouncing off of him and going out of play. Yeah. It was bouncing off of him and going back to the, you know, the Arsenal players. He Sometimes it was even going past him and through his yeah. legs and shit like that. So, and we know he's not the most technically gifted footballer. We know that no, he's, he's not. To... To sort of like to premier being West Ham's Premier League all time goal scorer has been rather unorthodox and started at Tooting and Mitchum some years ago and has taken him to places like Reading and Southampton and Nottingham Forest before he's come here and he's sort of like he's played at right back, he's played at right wing, left wing, blah, blah, blah. Um, before in the last, I mean, he's been playing striker for basically 18 months of his career. So we know that, that he's not. He's not a sort of like a tried and tested for other than the last 18 months of his career striker. And he's not the most technically gifted. He's not sort of like, he's not as skillful as a Lanzini or Ben Rama in, in that sense. But this has been going on for a little while now, Duke. I mean, what is it? One goal in 13 games, I think is the stat. Yeah, listen, with his back to goal yesterday, um, I, I, can. I mean, I, I can't disagree with what Ken's saying there, you know. Even after the sending off, we didn't, <clears throat> you know, we, we, I think we started to play a little bit, but again, it weren't good enough. Um, back to goal, Antonio yesterday was awful. When he was facing the goal and yeah. when he, he was, you know, balls, balls into feet as he's facing the goal or side on ready to turn, he yeah. looked a different player. Um, but it weren't good enough, Rob. It no. was not good enough. That first half, I saw points for about 15 minutes where I thought, okay, okay, it, it's not great. And we didn't, as Ken says there, it wasn't incisive enough. We retained mm. the ball for about a 15-minute period from about 20 to 35. Um, I'm not saying that we didn't give Arsenal a look in, in that moment. What I'm saying is when we had the ball, we looked comfortable. Now, mm. whether that was because Arsenal took their foot off the gas and, and let us play, maybe, I don't know, I couldn't tell you, but it, it was not good enough yesterday. Mm. And as you said, coming into it, your caveat was we're talking about this game and this game only. Yes. And this game was... Because there will be some people that will be like, enough. you know, I mean, on Gonzo's video this morning, because he, he said that he gets a lot of people that are moaning and groaning that he'll... Stop. He'll talk about a game where we've played crap, and people will be like, "Oh, what? What are you complaining about? We're fourth in the table, fifth in the table. We've been shit in the past." Blah blah blah. And it's like, no, I'm just talking about this match. What we've done up to this point, and what we will do in the future, isn't what we're talking about. Not it's this yeah, exactly. individual ninety minute match. Nothing more, nothing less. If I may, some people don't get that. From, if I may take that one from Ken. Mm. Ken, I think you're doing one chopper disservice there. <laughs> I, I honestly, at points, think you're doing one shot a disservice. Because there was times when one shot didn't even know what he was doing with the ball. <clears throat> it, there was, I think one, Antonio's the same, though. But with one shot, it worked. <laughs> it worked for him. Things yeah. came off for one shot, you know. Unfortunately, yesterday, you know, Antonio looked like the Antonio of old. I've got to say, yeah. he didn't look like the player that went on a run at the start of the season. But um, just looking at these these stats here, Duke, if I may just sort of bring that to your attention. Um, look at the Arsenal metric for their, their attacking sides. They come do down their, is, right, their right-hand side, 43% <laughs> of the play. There's no doubt about it. They they targeted Arthur Masuaku. They, they Arteta looked at him and went, there's your weak link, guys. Go at him. Listen, of course they did. And, and we knew that was going to be the case. If you look at ours, most of ours went down the right with Bowen. Yep. And again, you were saying about Bowen being, you know, one of the better players yesterday. Absolutely. Again, he looked like he was trying. Again, Lanzini's ball retention um, was good enough for me. You know, we were talking at half time. 
you know, I, I came onto the stream for a bit where you were doing a watch along, and I, you know, I, even I said in the live chat because I, I'll be honest, I had the headpiece in, I had my phone on the table, game on the TV, and I was listening to your commentary uh, ninety seconds behind what I was watching on the telly. Um, <laughs> But I was, you know, I was paying attention and I came and, and I think Scott said, it was a couple of people said it in the chat about Antonio coming off and giving Oco Flex a, a shout. Now, yeah. rightly or wrongly, um, I, I felt that that should have been the option. Now, Norwich being off on Saturday does Antonio a favour because he hasn't now got to face the, um, face the embarrassment of being dropped for a kid. Because I honestly think he would have been dropped on Saturday. Do you think Moyes would have pulled the trigger? Oh, I'm not, I'm not convinced he would have done. Listen, he waited long enough to pull the trigger with Lanzini and bringing Lanzini back in and removing um, uh, Ben Rama from the lineup. Now, I got a message from a certain Canadian whirlwind this morning okay. asking yep. me why I felt that. Um, why I felt that Moyes is doing a disservice to. Um, to Ben Rama by not playing him. And, and this, this was just when I was falling apart from waking up this morning with, with, with Corona. Um, and I disagree with Peach. You know, I don't think Moyes is doing Ben Rama a disservice by not using him or not using him correctly. I think Ben Rama is doing the West Ham fans and the West Ham as a club in general a disservice. You know, I think he um, thinks that he's Lionel Messi at times, and it, and unfortunately he he's not going to do his Lionel way. Messi. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, that's who Lionel Messi is actually named after. Um, is it really now that I never knew? Yeah, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Lionel Richie, uh, uh, Lionel Messi's mum was a big Lionel Richie fan, so wow. that's where he gets his name from. Lionel, Lionel Messi, Lionel Messi, not Lionel Messi, Lionel Messi. That's where he actually gets his name from. He was he was actually named after. Uh, Lionel Richie. You don't now, get this on other West Ham fan YouTube channels. No, you really it. don't. I'll give you all the bollocks information. It don't matter. <laughs> um, now, I said to you yesterday, mate, uh, Longello, for me, if, you, if you're looking at defending, mm. um, if you're looking at defending, you don't use Masawaka at left back. If you're looking at going forward, then Arthur's your man because he can. He's he's he's, he's, a, he's a decent winger. He could do a Julian Falbert and go sit on the bench as a winger for for Real Madrid and fall asleep. I'm convinced of it. <laughs> um, but defensively, um, you know, my dead grand could probably do a better job. You know, <laughs> um, at, at the moment, I could probably do a better job. Um, Covid it up. Um, yeah. I. I don't understand why Moyes, um, you know, insists on, on on using him at times. He can't defend. Um, and I'm not saying anything I've not said before. I've not been a, uh, you know, King Masuaku, King Arthur. Yeah. He's better, no, he's got a play. I've never been that person. Listen, when he has a good game, I will give him props that he's had a good game. Yeah. Um, You're not going to say all of a sudden he's a good player. Forward. Yes, no. Chelsea going forward, I thought he played relatively well, defensively yeah. dog shit. And I will yep. be the first one to say that. Yesterday, he was dog shit, full stop. You know, um, so let's let's cover the let's cover the first goal. So we come out in the second half and and we, we looked a bit toothless again. And they I think what what minute was the goal, Rob, if you wouldn't mind, was it fifty three? Fifty eight? Fifty hang on a minute. 48, excuse me. I was in a 48th minute. 48, I thought it was 50. yes. Now, um, you know, I, I, can't, I can't justify it, you know, as I said to you, uh, as I mentioned earlier in the, in the stream, Dufal and Dawson kind of relied on one another yeah. to deal with it that. It was a good ball. turn by Lacazette and a good ball by him to Martinelli. The, but... finish, the finish was outstanding. Now, I know that Cyber um, in the chat yesterday asked if, Ariola would have saved it. No, it was absolutely pinpoint no, from, from Martin. It was a great finish. Someone earlier in the chat said that they, I think it was, was it Sharky said it? Said that he absolutely loved, um, he loves uh, Martinelli. Yeah, no, Wally. Wally said, I really yeah. like Martinelli. Now, yeah, yeah. I, I do as well. Listen, yeah, I've got a lot of time for player. Arsenal and their academy at the minute. 
when yep. you look at what they've had come through, you know, Bakayo Saka, Emil Smith Rowe, um, uh, uh, Martinelli. You've also got um, Eddie and there yeah. at the minute. Now, for me, Eddie and Ketia out of contract in the summer. I was talking to a couple of Gooners last night and I said, all day long, all day long would I take him because he needs first team football, Rob. It's not that he's not any good. He just needs to play football. Look at Saka. Saka got a run of games and now he's one of the first names on the team sheet. Smith Rowe got a run of games. He got, you know, he's he's now in that first team, mm. you know, consi- consistently coming off the bench or even starting. He's scoring goals. Um, who's the guy at Liverpool? that Arsenal let go on loan last season and then permanently in there. Was it Willock? Uh, Willock. He's at Newcastle. Yeah. Again, give him give him game time. Yeah. And they they progress massively. Um, I don't think Arsenal need to worry about Lacazette and Aubameyang probably going either in January or in the summer. That's They're a pen. Enough. That's a pen. Um, I think that with Martinelli, Smith Rowe, and Saka in that lineup, I don't mm. think they need to worry about those three pissing off, or those two pissing off because they've got those three coming through. And I've got a lot of time for that. Mm. <clears throat> I've got a lot of time for that. Um, now, um, you know, I, I think that did we miss Zuma last night? Yes. No, it was a good tackle. I take it back. Can I? Good tackle. Mm. Do I think we missed Zuma last night massively? Do I think we yeah. missed the Bonner last night hugely? Yeah. Do I think we missed Cresswell last night? Unbelievably so. Um, but they're not excuses, Rob. We are no. a Premier League side that is on paper, and um, when I say that, I mean the amount of money that this club is worth, is mm. one of the richest clubs in the world. I believe we're in the top 10 of the richest clubs in the world. I think we're certainly going to be in the top 15 or you know, so, whether we're think, in the top 10, I'm not season, sure. I think before all of this, I think we were something like 8th or ninth. Right? Okay. you got Spurs, who are currently 750... About three quarters of a billion, in isn't it? Yeah. yeah. 756 million pound in debt. Now, they still went out and spent 42 million at the start of the season on a centre-back like Romero. Now, I'd rather have Zuma, don't get me wrong. But they're 742 million quid in debt and they're spending 42 million pounds. We're one of the richest, you know, certainly top 15 richest clubs in the world. And we're spending 25 on a defender <clears throat> and then really not strengthening the other positions that we're really struggling in. Um, mm. And it shows. It shows. Listen, we knew, we knew going into January, uh, going into August this year, we needed a left back. Mm. We knew going into uh, August this year, we needed a centre forward. Okay, we knew going into um, we knew going into August that we needed another probably attacking midfielder. Okay, the likes of a Lingard type player, Grady D and Garner. Um, uh, who's yeah, the he's, other chap? He's, he's not really doing too much though, is he? he isn't no, he's much. not. Yeah. Who's the other chap out of um, West Brom that we were interested in? Oh, uh, Brazilian guy. Oh, what was his? Pereira, Matthias Pereira. Matthias Pereira. Now, we knew all of this, yet we didn't do nothing about it. <clears throat> and now we're suffering. Yeah. We, we Listen, we all spoke about this. Every single uh, West Ham fan channel. Um, yes, all day long. All day long, uh, Ken. And, and Kent, or Kent will actually back us up on this. We all spoke about it, not just us, everyone in the chat, every other West Ham fan channel spoke about the fact that we needed to strengthen by probably, you know, eight eight players. <laughs> Pardon me, eight basically. players just to be able to um, have enough there to compete on yeah. on two fronts, you know, the, the domestic and the European front. We all said this, and yet, a couple of loans and a couple of signings and not much else, does there? You know, and now Who's, here we who are. Who do you going... blame for that? Do you do you blame Boardroom? Do you blame David Moyes? It's a combination of both. It's a combo of both, and it proved yep. that yesterday. So obviously, you, you go further into the second half, and even I was crying for Ben Rama, okay, to come on. We're one nil oh. down. We um. Yeah, 
Listen, I'm on your side, mate. I'll bring him in. You know that. We've had this discussion. Um, you know, we're, we're all screaming for, yeah, now. Yeah. I think I said eight yeah. to ten. Um, uh, we were all screaming for Ben Rama. Ben Rama comes off the pitch. And for me, it was one of two players responsible for their second goal. And again, I said this yeah. when I came on the stream after the game. I don't know how you feel about it, but I, I felt that he's dicking around yeah. up, on the, up on the left wing. Yeah. Um, I think he tries to do too much, if I'm being honest. I think he tries to he tries to do too much. I think he thinks he's better than what he is. And I'm not saying doing that he's that crap. At the start of the season, Rob. Yeah, but I, I don't know whether it's... Um, I, I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's psychological. I don't know if it's tiredness. I don't know what the reason is. But he just has this thing where he just seems to make the wrong decision at a key moment. You know, he'll 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 dribble when he should pass. He'll pass when he should shoot. He'll shoot when he should... Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but he wasn't doing that at the start of the season. The Newcastle game being one of the prime examples of that. He made the right decision. So what has changed up here for him? May, maybe. maybe consistently it, making the wrong decisions, Rob. But could it be... And I'm, try, I'm trying to answer the question of why. Could it be that maybe because at the beginning of the season it was coming off, his confidence is up, and he's trying it again and again, and people are getting wise to what he's doing, and they're putting the block on him. They're sort of like, they're, they're like, well, hang on, this is what he does, so this is what we're going to do to counter it. And he hasn't got something to counter their antidote to what he's been doing. He's a good player. We'll I'm find not saying a way. he's a one-trick pony. That's not what I'm saying. But it's like it's almost like he's just, you know, he'll he'll try and take he'll he'll take it on a dribble and and that and he get he gets he gets shut down and then he gets the ball again and then he'll go on another dribble and he gets shut down again and it's like for Christ's sakes, you know, that didn't work. And the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different outcome. But so. then that's down to him to find a way. And, Chris, and for me, that's. That's the key, you know, Kent says there. It's exactly that, yeah. He, you know, he, he could have played a simple ball. Instead, he's, he's trying to sort of beat two, three players, dribb dribble it past and make them look silly. And like I say, it's like, you know, you're not playing for Barcelona. You're not Lionel Messi. You are Saeed Ben Rama. You're a very good technical footballer. But let's, let's say it for what it is. And until about 18 months ago, the, the highest level you would played in England was for the championship. Now yeah. you're at a Premier League team. This is a step above. And what worked in the championship isn't going to work in the Premier League. It might, it might work against the teams that are promoted from the championship because they're operating at the lower level of the Premier League. It's not going to work consistently against the Man Uniteds, the Man Cities, the Liverpools, the Arsenals, the Tottenhams, the Leicester Cities, the Aston Villas. Do you know what I mean? It's just not. Listen, he was he was poor regardless. Yeah. Of Came off the bench. Listen, I, I, I kind of agree with what Kent's saying there. He is a 10, but I also like him out on the left a little bit more. And the reason I, I, for this is... I get he that he's a 10. In. Well, you say he's a 10, Kent, and I, I take your point. But then he he played on the left of a, of a three-man attack for Brentford. Yeah. He wasn't a number 10 at Brentford and he, it didn't... I know again, I know it's championship. I know it's a rung down the ladder. I appreciate that. But he wasn't a 10 at his previous club either. I mean, listen, we're, we're in a situation for me where currently it's not good enough, Rob. Hmm. It's, it's not good enough, regardless of... And not just from on. Ben Rama. I've got to get no, that no, out. No, it's, no, no, this no. is not Ben Rama bashing. This is, you know, no, this is not no, no, hate no. as some people might like to dress it up. It's a, it's a legitimate footballing opinion, observation, um, that for whatever reason, Ben Rama, Fornells and Antonio, they're the three of, of the attacking quartet the only one that I absolve, absolve from any blame of those four, the, the attacking four for yesterday's defeat, performance and, and everything else is, is Jared Bowen. But those other three, they carry an awful lot of the burden of responsibility for yesterday's performance and result, in my view. 
Yeah, I, I, I just don't think they were good enough. Massive, ma- and, and that's all I feel I felt was, was yeah. you know, highly, highly responsible. I thought you going know, forward he was goal, okay, but... That second um, goal, he jogged back, Rob. He was jogging back for that goal. He didn't... He didn't bust a gut no. for me to get back. In answer to your question, Sharky, my thoughts are that Arsenal um, are, are a technically very good footballing outfit. I do think that they are going to come a cropper the same as I've thought basically since 2004. And this is this is nothing revelatory. You know, anyone that's got a, a pair of eyes and a brain can see that when they go to the sort of like the other big boys, the Chelsea's, the Tottenham's, the Manchester United's, the Liverpool's, the Manchester City's, that is when they will struggle. They have something of a soft underbelly. Now, it may well be that Mikel Arteta might be able to do some surgery and, and get that particular deficiency ironed out, but it's going to take him time. He's not going to do it any time in the next sort of like, he's not going to do it this season. Now, if they manage to finish in the top four, I think they have massively punched above their weight. I, I seriously doubt it that they're going to finish top four. Top six wouldn't shock me. Um, but top top four would. Um, like I say, they're a, they're a very good footballing team. They're they're a, a, a club steeped in tradition and history, and I've got a bit of a soft spot because, as I've said before, my grandfa- late grandfather was an Arsenal fan. Um, as far as yesterday was concerned, we didn't test them enough, and they didn't have to get out of third gear. So. There you go. That's my opinion. Um, yeah, I, I I get that, but like I say, he he wasn't he wasn't a number ten at Brentford. He he was, yeah, he he was he was not a, like a, a proper number ten. It's, listen, that's just my my take on it, Kent. Um, you may view it entirely differently. Um, if you do, mate, I uh, will agree to disagree on that one. But I just think if if you're a player of that amount of skill, which he clearly is. And I'm yeah. sure you agree with me, Kent, and I'm sure you'd agree with me, Duke, that he is a very skillful player. Now, I I happen to believe, it's my opinion, that if you have that amount of skill, you should be able to be put wide left, wide right, central, doesn't matter. You can, you can make your skills effective wherever you are on the pitch. You, you know, I, if you could have put Diego Maradona, you could have put George Best, you could have put Johan Cruyff, Zinedine Zidane, you know, in, in a multitude of positions. Please don't tell me that, me that second, would have, Rob. you know, not been effective. What's up, mate? Give me two seconds. I've just got to jump off camera. Oh, oh dear. The plot thickens. Don't <laughs> listen. He's got COVID, guys, in case, in case you weren't aware. Um, Duke is struggling with COVID, so he might have to dip in and out. But um, like I say, um, I I blame the entire and, and I don't know if you've been watching these these little nuggets of these little stats that you know. Look at that, Mikel Antonio. He was dispossessed seven times, and I don't know if you saw it. I'll I'll just wind back a couple. These are the past success percentages again. Mikel Antonio. Now I know he's a number nine or at least he's playing as a number nine. Um, and he's not judged so much on past success, but 40%. Give me a break. That's ridiculous. That is absolutely piss poor. Um, I know that, like I say, there's some people that turn around and say that they don't think Lanzini was terribly effective. Um, like I say, all right, penetrative wise, you know, in terms of, you know, getting shots away on goal and all, all the rest of it, I, I, I might, I might be able to agree with that, but you just saw that stat there. His pass success was 95%. So he got, he, you know, he'll get the ball, he'll give the ball. And very rarely will the ball not go to its its destination. Um, there was too many players there yesterday that was giving the ball away um, too cheaply at times. Um, just looking at your comment there, Kent, I believe if we got Lingard in the summer, we would have firmly been in fourth. I agree because I think there were cert- there would have been certain games where if he didn't start and he comes on from the bench, he's a game changer. Um, I think even if he's on the bench and he doesn't play, I think that his mere presence will maybe get an extra 5 
out of the players that are on the pitch because they're going to be thinking, Christ, they got we got we got um, you know Lingard's on the bench, so I've got to up my levels. I think his mere presence would have helped. I I completely agree with that. Um, it didn't happen. Now that wasn't entirely down to West Ham, from what I'm led to believe. From what I'm led to believe, Lingard wanted to stay. He wanted to give his his boyhood club another chance. And I completely understand that. I can I can look at, you know, I can put myself in his shoes and say, well, what if I was at West Ham and I wasn't getting a game and this, that and the other, and I was in Lingard's shoes at West Ham? Um, yeah, I'd, I'd want to stay I because it's my boyhood club. But fundamentally, it hasn't worked. Now, I hope we get Lingard in, in the January window. And all those people that were turning around a month ago and saying, why do we want Lingard? He wouldn't get in our starting eleven. Completely missed the point. It's not a game. Football is not a game now in the Premier League in the year 2021 going towards 2022. It is not about purely the starting eleven. Yes, a month or two ago, Jesse Lingard may not have got in our starting eleven at that moment in time. He bloody well would now. But at that time, he might not have done. I completely get that. But there would have been games, as I say, where he could have come on and he could have changed a losing position to a point or maybe changed a point to all three. Um, but there you go. Sharky, uh, yeah, he, he got tested um, this morning. He, he started feeling crap overnight after we did the stream last night. And yeah, he, he's, he's tested positive, mate. So... Um, I wasn't totally sure if he was going to be on the stream with me today. Um, he's decided that he's going to get off of his sick bed, and yeah, he's uh, he, he's plodding on. But as I say, he, he's struggling now. This is what concerns me, guys. This is what concerns me. This is the Premier League form table. Now, there's the top eight. We're nowhere to be seen. We have dropped off of the cliff. We've dropped off. Now, you got there at the top. You've got Man City and Liverpool. No real shock there, is it? Um, you've got Chelsea in fourth. Aston Villa. Now, Aston Villa in third really did surprise me. I was like, wow, they've they've really sort of come up on the rails. What's going on there? I mean, even Man United are in fifth. You've then got Spurs, sixth. Arsenal, seventh. Brentford, eighth. We move on. And now we eventually find ourselves there. We are in twelfth. We've got one win out of our last six, scored five, conceded eight. Oh, dear. We are below in the Premier League form table, um, below Wolves, Leicester and Crystal Palace as well. Newcastle. Now, Newcastle, you look at them. They're in the shit. There's no other way of saying it. They are in the shit. But on the Premier League form table, they are only separated from us on goal difference and they've played a game less because... It's sort of like the way this this form table is is done. It's not on the last six games specifically. It's it's sort of like on match weeks, and because there's been sort of like matches here and there that have been cancelled with COVID, that's why there's the a little bit of a sort of discrepancy there. But we're twelfth in that form table, and that is concerning. Um, Duke. Yeah, I'm just I'm just catching up with the chat, Rob. Okay. Um, because um, there's a delusional, uh, either a troll or um, a, a, a troll West Ham fan. Right. In the, uh, ah, in the chat. Yes. Before you, before you go into that, before you yep. go into that. Go for it. Um, I, 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 I don't owe you anything. If anything, There's you owe me an apology. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. And also he turned around and said that we wouldn't get anything out of the Chelsea game. I'd like it's to point funny. out. You should say points. that. Shut up. Um, you're not surprised because on paper we're a championship try. We're a championship side, mate. You, and, and then you come in with this. I'm not a troll. Come on, wake up, fellas. Yet yeah, you put this bollocks on on my stream. You say that we're a fucking championship side, mate. Give your head a wobble, please. Jesus, a Christ. I'm, you I'm are gonna, an embarrassment, I'm give you an mate. I'll tell you what, because Iron Man, correct me if I'm wrong. But you turned around on a stream that we did, um, I think around about the Man City game, and you said that 
Arsenal were going to finish fourth ahead of us? Just a yes or no. I don't need a long-winded answer for this. Yes or no. You you just can you just confirm you did say that? I'm I know you said it, and I'm sure you know you said it. Um, but can you just confirm to everybody that's in the live chat that you said that Arsenal were going to finish fourth? Correct? Yes or no? I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, before you before you come in, I'll I'll help you out. I'll help you out because I'm I'm friendly like that. I'm I'm quite uh quite useful like that. I will uh I've I've got yeah, here we go. Uh let me just help everybody out. Just just bear with me, guys. Um there we go. Now let me just let me just sort of maybe magnify that just in case people can't see that. Okay, so Iron Man TV, there you are. Um, ask Gacy, 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 Gacy. Yep. Gacy, can, can I just? Yep. Have that one, mate. There you go. Yep. Okay. Right. It's there. Now, just, Arsenal just... will finish above us. Okay. Well, right, that's okay. that's really interesting. That is really interesting oh, because on because on Hammer's chat a day or two ago, Iron Man TV. Look at that comment at the bottom, ladies and gentlemen. What does that say? What does that say? Yeah, it says. Uh, Can you read that? Let me, let me just go full enough. screen with that, and let me just let me just shut <laughs> that off. Um, I'll read it in case you can't read it. It says right, Iron Man TV, and this was this was before All the right. Arsenal game. Arteta is not the man long term. Arsenal have looked good against average sides, but when they come up against a side with firepower, they struggle. No way, Arsenal will get top four. Not consistent enough. So Iron Man, I'm I'm struggling because on one stream you're turning around and saying that um, Arsenal will get top four. And on another stream, on another channel, you're saying <coughs> there's no way that they'll get top four. I'm really confused. I'm really confused. So could you help me out there, Iron Man? It's really confusing. So are they going to make top four or are they not going to make top four? Because they can't do both. They can't finish in the top four and outside the top four, the same team. It's impossible. So what are they going to do? I've got there's the evidence. You've done it on two different channels. Yes, they're going to make top four. No, they're not. Which is it? Which is it? No, 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 no. Don't, don't give me that load of old bollocks, right? You've put on two separate streams and I've got the evidence there in front of you. You've said it on Hammer's chat. There's no way that Arsenal will finish in the top four. You've turned around on ours and said they will finish in the top four. Which is it? Which is it? Help me out. Help me out. Because I'm not being funny. I have a little bit of a problem believing someone that says one thing to one person and says something completely the opposite to someone else. That, I'm afraid you lose credibility. And if you lose credibility, I struggle to believe you. I struggle to believe you. Duke? I mean, listen. Oh, hang right. on. No, 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 no. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. You turn. Let me just. Right. You turned around and said they will get to top four after the Man City game. You turned around before the Arsenal game and said they won't get top four. Now you're saying they will. So so we've gone from they will finish top four to they won't finish top four to they will finish top four. You're just making this shit up as you go along, mate. Seriously? Listen, listen, the guy. The guy I'll tell you came what. In. And I tell you what, came in on the chat and and kind of made a. I'll be honest, made a beeline for me, for for want of a better word, Mister Rob. He came in mm -hmm. for a beeline for me, um, in in earlier streams, mm -hmm. saying that I don't talk sense and that I, yep. I I'm, I'm not going back and looking for it because I I leave that to you. I can't be asked. Um, I'm not going to deal with uh, a negative Nancy, if you will. Um. Oh, the God. Bloke, what a bloke, load of the bloke's, an, the bloke's an embarrassment. Um, you know my feelings on who I think it might be. Okay, that kind of... The, the fact that this gentleman does... Uh, says that he goes to games, um, you know, um, doesn't necessarily... Uh, I've seen them in the last two I games and they've be. improved. Iron Man, you made that comment on Hammer's chat before this last game. Before this last game, don't give me that bollocks about you've seen him in the last two because you turned around before this last one and said, No way they will get top four. 
And then we were... the round the Man City game, you said they will get top four. So you've gone, they will, they won't, and they will again. Mate, give your head you a wobble. Sir, Seriously. A, you are a negative Nancy. Now, I say this because, um, like I say, you, you came in and you kind of made a beeline for me. And I, I actually I actually dropped the band hammer on on one of the first um on one of the first uh, comments that you, you know the, the first videos that you you cropped up on out of fucking nowhere because you started making silly little schoolboy threats <laughs> at other people you're not realistic mate fuck mine if you, you were, keep like, changing oh, your mind mate you don't know where you're at oh, you're driving me mad like honestly i i've got all the time in the world for west ham fans that want to come on Put their point across, as long as it is a point that they can back up and they don't change their mind and they, you know... You've, Do you want you've another one, no, Do you want, to, on. want it, to show you another it, one? It, um, he started on Ben Rama. He, he started... Uh, yeah. He started on Ben Rama in, in a that? couple of these. Yeah. Duke, calm it, mate. Listen, buddy, I'm not hiding behind a fake YouTube name. Iron Man TV, that's not your name. You know my name. Like... I, I don't have to calm it, mate. I don't. You're talking shit. You're boring everyone. You've got no backup to a valid point. It's not like you're coming at me with stats. You're just making stupid fucking comments that are winding people up, including myself. You know, I had this. I had this dealio with someone last season, and I I had all the stats to back up my point. Now, if you come at me with stats and prove a point that these guys, for your opinion, are rubbish and you can prove to me that you have a valid argument as to why you think they're rubbish, knock yourself out. Come onto the chat. I'll send you a stream. We'll have a conversation, but you can't. But like Brendan says, let's move on, shall we? Because personally, you're a fucking idiot. Anyway. Well, before we do Sorry. move on, I, 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 do you know, I'm going I'm to get this one off my chest. Now, the problem I have with this, Mr. Iron Man, is that comment there where you said you'd buy everyone a kit, everyone a kit, and you'd clean our houses and you'd clean our cars and all the rest of it, right? Um, and you then put, hang on, let me find it. There we go. You claim that you have three businesses so you won't be bankrupt. And I turned around to you and said, I'll tell you what, instead of all this Aaron nonsense, Pumper. all this nonsense about um, getting us all a kit and cleaning our houses and cleaning our cars, why don't you just put 50 quid into Isla's account and we'll say no more about it. And you turned around and said, um, oh, I'm having trouble with money, this, that and the other. Hang on, you've got three businesses. How does that work? Liars, liars can't keep track of their lies, Mr. Mm. Ross. That's the problem. Yeah, that's why honest people don't need to have a good memory. <laughs> Ken don't do stats, apparently. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Brendan, it's on its way, mate. It's on its way, courtesy of Iron Man TV. Um, allegedly, allegedly. Anyway, I, I say it oh, courtesy of Iron Man TV. He's just been blocked, so fuck it. <laughs> no, I'm so, I'm sorry, but you know, someone that's got three businesses can't put fifty quid in for for a for a, a girl that is that is you know let's let's have it right for a little girl whose time is limited. He cannot yep. with three businesses. He cannot find fifty quid. And bear in mind, this is a guy that turned around and said he would get everyone a kit, not just you and me, but everyone that was in the stream at that time. He said he would clean everyone's houses. He said he would clean everyone's cars. And when I turned around and said, I'll tell you what, never mind all that. When when he he was made to look very silly when we got a point against Brighton, which he said we wasn't, and we beat Chelsea, which he said we wouldn't, right? I turn around and go, I'll tell you what, put 50 quid in uh, Isla's tin. We'll say no more about it. I think that's being quite fair, given what outlay he could have potentially been looking at. Put 50 quid in Isla's tin. We'll say no more about it. Oh no, I can't. I can't because money's a bit tight and all the rest of it. And and I and at the time we turned around and went, okay, fair enough. And then I thought, hang on a minute. And I found that I have three businesses. Three businesses, and you can't afford 50 quid, mate. You're talking shit. Don't come here. You're not welcome. You know, you you want to you want to come on here and you want to talk bollocks, right? You want to come on here and give it a load of old shit. Um, 
Don't bother. Don't don't bother. You're not welcome here. Done. We're we're a better fan base. We're a better fan base than than he's been portraying. Mm. And I, I, if I'm honest with you, mate, I can't be dealing. Now, if he wants to come on, and you know, wants to go on for Twitter, he, listen, he's got my Twitter handle. If he wants to come on and have a grown up conversation, he wants to send me his phone number and wants to have a chat. I've got I've got no qualms of having a chat, Gacy. I really don't. I'm, I'm more than mm. welcome to have a conversation and and understand where mm. <laughs> where he's coming from, you know. Um, and but he, but he's, he's not going to because, no. as I've said prior. He is a troll, Rob. He is a troll. There's there's no need yeah. for the way he comes in. I've kept my mouth shut on him for a little while, but I just I find it quite difficult to keep my mouth shut when there's a little little girl whose time on this mortal coil is growing shorter by the day. And I've I've said to him, put 50 quid in, and he's giving it all the bollocks about, oh, I don't have the money. And then he turns around and says, Oh, I've got free businesses, and you can't afford 50 quid. I have a problem with that. And I also have a problem with that when, like I say, and I've just shown you it, before the Man City game, Arsenal will make top four. Before the Arsenal game, no way (laughs) Arsenal will make top four. And now he's turning around and going, I've seen him in their last two games and I think they've improved and they'll make top four. Fuck off, mate. Listen, it might be that they make top four. It might be that they they go on and run there. And I've got no qualms with that. But he's changing his mind with the more he changes his underwear, mate. As as Ken's just turned around and said there, Rob, as Ken's just turned around and said there, he uses his eyes. Stats can lie. And and you know what, Ken? You're right. You know, for all intents and purposes, you are right. Do I think Ben Realm has been good enough recently? No, I don't. Does that make him rubbish and shit? No, it doesn't. Do I think Antonio's been good enough recently? No, I don't think he has. But does that make him rubbish and shit? No, it doesn't. You know, at the end of the day... In answer, in answer to your question, Epic, we are talking about... Let me find it. Iron Man TV. Uh, hang on. Iron Man TV. Who? Uh, let me just let me just show everyone what an absolute tit the geezer is. Um, is the man that yesterday, and we can all have an opinion on it, but I think this was rather an overreaction, don't you? Oh yeah, that was yesterday in our chat. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And like I say, I'm not happy with the match. And I think that, the, you know, there are things fundamentally that Moyes could have done that might have might have ended in a different outcome. Maybe not. But seriously, let's look at it. He comes into the club in his first stint, keep, gets out of the relegation shit, does it. He's let go by the club. He's then brought back to the club, gets out of the relegation shit again, please. He does it. The following season, we finish sixth and qualify for the Europa League. And we get one bad result. And it's Moyes out. I'm like, really? Yeah, really? Again, again, mate, they're, they're idiots, aren't they? <laughs> Thank you, Ken. Much appreciated, sir. Yeah. Apologies, guys, but like I say, it's it's just uh, I've kept my mouth shut on this for a little while. I've just sort of tried to sort of ignore it. But I, like I say, I cannot abide people that just talk blatant shit. You know, he's saying one thing on one stream and he's saying something completely the opposite on another stream. And I found that comment and I was I looked at it straight away and went, I can't be having this. Just can't be having this, you know. And then to turn around and say, I can't afford 50 quid, despite the fact that you're you've got free businesses and you can't afford 50 quid for a dying seven year old girl. Fuck off. You're an absolute waste of fucking space. Yeah, um, listen, I'm not going to disagree with you, mate. You know my feelings on it. Mm. Anyway, apologies for getting a bit sweary and angry, but it, it does make me angry, I'm afraid. Yeah. So, you know, never mind. No, anyway, no look, listen, it was, it, was a, it was a shit showing. There's no, I can't deny it, it you know. Um, it is concerning. Where where do we go from here, Duke? What's the antidote? I mean, I know obviously the game against Norwich has, has gone. So that's obviously done us out of a job over the next couple of days because we would have had the pre-match, the post-match. You had the, the watch along. I was going to the game. Um, but, you know, so that's all been sort of put on the back burner. But so the next game, as things stand, unless it gets cancelled, is the, uh, the League Cup quarterfinal at um, the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Um, it? now, Wednesday, it? yes, so wh- where do we head, go from here? How we need to turn this around because we cannot 
put in a, a, a performance like that, anything close to that against Tottenham, because they will bend us over and sort of like they'll they'll do us dry, mate. Seriously. Um, listen, if uh, and I've said this on other streams, Rod, um, when we've done things, um, you know my take on this. If you can't get yourself up for a London derby like we did last night and we didn't get ourselves up for that London derby and you don't deserve nope. to wear that shirt. Now, that being said, if you can't get yourself up for a London derby against the side that we consider um, a, a rival as fans, we consider Spurs as a rival. If the players can't get themselves up for that game in what is a cup quarter final mm. and a bloody good shout at winning a trophy this season. Yep. Um, you, again, you don't deserve to wear that shirt. Now, for me, I would have, uh, I would have, probably, if it comes to it, Von Gallo at left back, mm -hmm. rather than Mass, if, if Cresswell's not fit for, uh, oh, good evening, Andy. Um, if, if Cressy's not fit for Spurs next Wednesday, then it's Von Gallo for me. You know, um, yeah, I agree. On the, on the stream last night, and as I said earlier, Masuaku doing his dad run to get back. There was no, there was no effort. No you know who it reminded me of? <coughs> Remember Roger Johnson at Man City? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he almost ran into relegation, the net, didn't he? Relegation, Roger. Yeah, that's him. Um, I, I, you know, I, I, I got very, I got very frustrated with him yesterday. As you know, I came on the stream in the end of the evening. Um, I hope you're uh, wrong, I, Epic. I, I hope you're I, wrong. I, I hope you're wrong. And, and, and I think Longello. I, I also think Cressy might be back in time for the, for the Spuds. Yeah. The only yeah, thing that, that concerns me um, is that I, where I say I hope you're wrong, the only thing that I would concede with that Epic might have a point is that Longello, who we said was one of the two standout performances in that back Very four for so. me, it was Ashby and Longello. Everybody said they were the standout performers. And yet, Longello, in the two fixtures that followed that Dinamo Zagreb home fixture, Longello was nowhere to be seen, despite the fact Cresswell was out injured. Now, so so looking at that statement, I can actually understand what Epic's saying. You know, despite the fact that Masuaku is that defensively deficient, does does David Moyes drop him? Uh, listen, I don't think he's going to have a choice, mate. I really don't, you know, if we continue to put in performances like we're putting in and we're, and we're not looking comfortable and we're not on the money, then it, um, a bit, I, I am worried that if he continues to play in there. Again, this is what I said he could have done last night, Casey. Mm. I, said, yeah. I said he could have done this last night. So, you know, he chose not to. Um, and therefore, there was his downfall, and then we ended up with a sending off of, uh, of obviously Vladimir to foul. Yeah. So um, you still don't think that was it? That was a foul, yellow card, penalty, any of it? No, I don't. I, I really don't. Hmm. Um, I think that that was a fucking embarrassing mistake by the referee. Um, if that was a penalty, then the Dawson one was stonewall for me. He wins the ball. He also, not only does he win the ball with with the first part of the tackle, he also wins the ball a second time with his trailing leg. <laughs> yes, you, do you think that there's step. any, do you think there's any um, credence in the argument that he didn't get enough of the ball? No, I don't. I think that's, that's a load of shit. Um, I, I, I can't, I, mate, I can't. Um, the game's gone. I, I said it in the chat yesterday and I said it when I came on last night. Um, the game's gone. Um, VAR, uh, clear and obvious error. I don't know what you're saying. Um, for me, it was a massive clear and obvious error. And the um, uh, Dermot Gallagher says it, it wasn't a red. Uh, it, no. wasn't a, um, it wasn't a penalty. He's also saying it wasn't a yellow card. Peter Walton said that as well. Well, what more do you need? You know, listen, is he going to turn around? I, I don't think, I don't even think we can go to a um, a panel, can we? because no, it wasn't a straight red. <laughs> but can the referee rescind that in hindsight? Uh, I, I, I'm not too sure whether they can. 
I don't foresee that they will because it's 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 a rarity for for a referee to actually put their hands up and admit that they've made a mistake, isn't it? So I'm not expecting yeah. that. I'm not holding my breath. Um, I thought Dawson was awful last night. I was 90 yards away from Kufau tackle. Dawson was awful. I thought Dawson had a good game. I, th- I thought Dawson did all right last night, apart from the um, apart from the first goal. I thought he played quite well. Um, again, uh, everyone's opinions are valid. Um, as, I, as I said earlier, Andy and Ken, I think you, you missed. Um, you may have missed my comments on on the first yellow. Anywhere else on the pitch, mm-hmm. a free kick given, and, and nothing else he's done for that kind of handoff. Yes, he caught him and. Yeah, it's, it's tosh. Um, again, last week, you know, the penalty against Burnley, um, it's stonewall for me. It's a stonewall penalty. He kicks the player. He doesn't kick the ball. Um, you know, we, we saw, not being funny, we saw Lacazette dive like nobody's business yesterday so many times. Um, reminded me of a Mia They were Khalifa. all at it. Well, it reminded me of a Mia Khalifa tweet where she turns around and she says, <laughs> you, you, you know the one I'm on about, didn't you? Where she turns around and she says, you went yeah. down more times than I did back in 2014. I mean, <laughs> brilliant. I don't know who she is, to be fair. It's no, a name, no, I but it. I don't... I Google it and see I've... what comes up. I've got a funny feeling I know what exactly what will come up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> another story. At my age, I'm I'm happy if I can raise a smile, let alone anything else. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh God! Oh, <laughs> dear. Uh, James doesn't think either yellow, uh, either um, of two oh, okay. was, was a yellow. I've said, listen, I've boys. seen them given though. That's the thing. It's it's not like I can look at them and go, Jesus Christ, where has that come from? I have seen them given. Whether I think it was or wasn't is irrelevant. The referee obviously did. Yeah, see, Kent's right. I was, again, watched the replay of it, and I, you know, he went down holding his face. He knew what he was doing. He was trying to get the free kick. He was yeah. trying to get the player booked. And you only have to look at that, and and you know, it's it's ridiculous. And and I'm I'm upset with it because now we're in a situation. And don't get me wrong, I'd I'd like to point out that um, Ashby came off the bench last night. Uh, epic, I have yes, it's fucking awful, mate. Um. Ashby came off the bench last night and held his own. So if it comes to it and we don't have a right back for, um, <laughs> um, we don't have a right back for the game against Buds, I wouldn't be upset at seeing um, yeah, uh, Ashby start. You know, so I'm 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 in that situation, mate. I really yeah. am. Yeah, yeah, and no, I I thought in that brief cameo that that Ashby had and I actually think he should have come on before he did I think he basically should have come on the moment that Kufal walked off the pitch um be that as it may in the time that he was on the pitch I've got to say I thought he, he looked very neat and tidy and I think he played with no no apprehension no fear in him he, he was just like fuck it I'm gonna go out here and play why not yeah, and you know what? If, like I say, if Johnson's not fit, and obviously Sue Fowl now and Fredericks, I'd stick Ashby in. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be upset if Ashby and Ron Gallo start against the Spuds. At the end of the day, it's what it is. Um, what what cup do I want? Do, would I rather have the uh, Europa League at the end of the season, the FA Cup or the League Cup? Well, listen, considering where we're at with injuries at the minute, um, is what it is, isn't it? Mm. You know, I, I you know... If you can't get yourself up for a game against Spurs, that's your own fault. But, but yes, I, re- I remember him, Kent. He also played for Watford, if I remember correctly. Yeah. But that being said, um, I'd rather have the Europa League at the end of the season and see Mark Noble walk us out there. You know what I mean? Well, I suppose from the point of view that it qualifies you for the Champions League, whereas the FA Cup and the League Cup don't. Listen, Europa um, League Cup gives us conference, and as we know, um, yeah, yeah, that that for me is more of a bollocks league than the League Cup. If you're honest, you know, do you know what I mean? It's it's just 
why, why are you going out to play some Maltese side that has an airport, you know, the planes land over the top of the, you know, the stadium. If you kick the ball up to why <laughs> as the planes coming into land, it's being played and bird strike, it's ball strike. You know what I mean? It's just, it's ridiculous. So, um, I, you know, as I said to you before, I'd rather win a cup and, I'd rather win a cup and, yeah, okay, you know yeah. what? I'd, I'd love the FA Cup. I really would. Yeah. Really it's would. a toss-up I mean, between... Gacy, you were in your mid-20s, weren't you? Late, late, mid to late 20s when we won the FA Cup. I mean, I was only, I was only 18 I was months old myself. And I, and I have to say, just on yeah. that note, don't give me that. On that Nasty note, bastard. Seeing as... Oh, this. oh, hello. Oh, I know what this is. Yeah, I've seen this. It's doing better days. Yeah. But that, look at the tassels on the end. Look, the tassels are... As ropey as dot, look. They look well ropey, didn't they? Look, it's, it's falling yeah. apart in my lap. Look, I've got bits here. But that is I've the, got uh... a scarf from the 06 Cup final, but... Oh, don't, don't you like... start. That's, that's don't the, uh, you that's the, start. That's the, that's the, cup. That's the FA Cup scarf. And, and that was what my old man gave me. And I actually, I'll be honest with you, I took that to the bowling pub. Yep. This scarf I took to the bowling pub. Uh, for the for the FA Cup final against um, against Liverpool, oh, I actually took that because believe it or not, yeah, it was like the stars were due to align for that cup because I was eighteen months old and my dad was twenty six when um, I forgive you. I think it was it was it. No, my dad my dad was twenty eight. And I was 18 months old when uh, West Ham beat Arsenal in the cup final. Yep. He didn't score many with his head, did he, Trevor? And believe it or not, and believe it or not, I was 28, or going on 28, should I say, like my dad was. And my little girl um, was 18 months old when we played Liverpool in the FA Cup. So everything Ah. seemed to be aligning for us to have won that. You know, me being 28 and Grace being 18 months old, my dad being 28, me being 18 months old, it seemed like it was that. It was it was fake. But, um, uh, you know, the Argentinian guy, uh, who I still kind of, you know, he who shall not be named. Um, Scaroni! I'm going to cry again. Stop it. I'm having... I'm having was he named flashbacks. because his, his mum was a Lionel Richie fan? Oh, listen, I wouldn't be surprised. Lionel Richie is actually quite big in Argentina, believe is it or he? not. Do you, know, it, it's, it's, <laughs> it, you, you find weird things like that. It's not only for <laughs> Nazis, it's apparently absolutely huge in Serbia. Yeah. Um, uh, who, Man, who uh, Norman Wisdom, where's Norman? Yes, Lionel was in Lionel Richie, yeah. Um, where's Norman Wisdom? Was massive. I think was in Bulgaria, possibly something like no, no. Countries. Was it Bulgaria or Romania? It might be it was it was one of them, wouldn't it? One of the two Eastern Bloc. It was one of the Eastern Bloc countries yeah. that Normal Wisdom was fucking massive in, like yeah, massive mental. in. Um, David Hasselhoff. He's like a he's like a, a music star in Germany. Like, I mean, a music yeah. star. He is like unbelievably popular out in Germany, and you're kind of looking at it and going, no. I, I don't know. I don't understand. I don't understand why David, David, David Hasselhoff cannot sing. Listen, the, uh, see, I, I nearly went racially insensitive then, Gates. See, I was going to say even small people are massive in Japan because, you know, it's, it's, but Steady. I'm not that person. No, listen. Steady. It's joking, it? Uh, Oh, dear. Nolan, we've, Nolan, we've got... One of them's married to Shane Ritchie. And she was, was, yeah, was, that was Colleen. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Passed Colleen away. Nolan. Yeah. Um, Shane Ritchie. Shane Ritchie's ex. Did you? I was, yeah. I was on um kids' TV show called Run the Rift. I think I was 12 or 13. Not great, Scott, Scott. but I'll still be doing this shit for you boys. You know that? Yeah. I saw he... Norman with driving around on the Isle of Wight when I was... Ten and with the man who it was then, you know what? Yeah, I see. I, I t- let me let me tell you quickly. I'm going massively off kilter again. We do this. It's fine. See, I remember. Did you guys? You Gacy, so You must know Laura and Ardy. They're from your time, aren't they? Like, yeah. You were you were probably you know in your 
mid thirties when they stop performing. Um, now, Apropos I absolutely think... nothing, Charlie Chaplin is from my neck of the woods. My my original yes. stomping yes. ground, Kennington. Yes, there you go. Bob Hope is from um, from Elton. my neck of the woods. Uh, well, no, he, he actually where he's born in Elton. He grew up in Erith, believe it or not. Jim Davidson was born and raised in. Um, Charlton, wasn't it? Was it Charlton, or was he a Charlton fan? Yeah, no, he was. He was born and raised in Elton, uh, in between Charlton and Elton. He was. Um, but anyway, just again, go to digress again. Um, Laurel and Hardy. Yeah. See, I I didn't mind Laurel and Hardy. I thought they were all right. Right, I thought they were all right. But I thought you were more of an a... Abbott and Costello man. You know, didn't you? I, I knew it. Costello, for me was so much. They There's were funnier. people watching this going, who? Yeah, no, that's probably because they're all about like thirty years younger than us. But no, um, Abbott and Costello, I loved. Um, and I used to, I tell you what, I used to love Rob. I don't know if you've seen, you know, the Road Two movies with Bing Crosby and Bob Hope. No, like no. the film uh, Road to Mandalay and the Road no. to. Um, there's one. I think it's the Road to Bali, and okay. uh, I can't remember the actress's name. She was, uh, was one of the pinups, obviously from the fifties and sixties. But it's, I think it's the Road to Bali, and I think it's um, it's Bing Crosby and. Bob Hope, right, in the same sort of manner is the same sort of com- comedic value that Abbott and Costello used to bring you slapstick comedy. Yeah, and Dean Martin crops up. Okay. Dean Martin crops up, and this is this was during the, the fallout of Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Now again, I'm a big Rat Pack fan, and I'm so pissed off I can't go tomorrow. Now that's where me up. Oh yes, <laughs> I'll have to watch him live on Facebook. Um. Dean well, I'm not going to go now on my own. I'm not going to be a Billy No that. Mates. Dean Martin has a dream in the film where he's kissing someone. And he thinks... Oh, hang on. Um, I think it might be uh, Julie Newmar or someone. It, it's yeah. Someone like that. And he's kissing the, 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 the pin-up actress in it. And then the camera turns and the person lets go of Dean Martin's head and it's Jerry Lewis laughing at the camera. So... This this whole dream scene was him having a dream about Jerry Lewis, and of course, obviously at that point they were they'd broken up. Their friendship was falling apart. Um, but no, I yeah, I, I, I digress. Um, I love all of that. I prefer Abbott and Costello over um, Laura Leonardi. I'm not going to lie. I think that's enough bullshit, didn't you? I think we're um, yeah, Brendan. Yeah, I'm pissed off. I'm I'm so upset. I'm so uh... happy. Yeah, no, he he, he was going to see him tomorrow at the... What was the name of the pub again? The, was it the Carrington? Chatterton Bromley. Yeah. And I was going to go, but I'm not being funny. You know, if Duke's can't, Duke can't go, I'm I'm going to turn up. I'm going to be like a Billy No Mates. So I'm not going to know anyone. So it's like, nah, stuff that I'll just stay at home and I'll, I'll, I'll have to talk to the <laughs> wife, I guess. Because we ain't going to be doing the, the, the Norwich preview. So I'm, I'm going to have I'm going to have to talk to the wife. I, I, I don't know sort of whether I can, I can handle that. I, I hope not. I might have to draw, join you on the watch along. We're going to have to find a Premier League game, aren't we, to do a watch along? I quite happy to do one, mate. It's not like I can fucking do anything else in the next 10 days, is it? Maybe maybe, maybe we should do a watch along every day of yourself. When? Because remind me, do you have to self-isolate for seven days or 10 days? What What's the crack? 10 and it's from today. So it will actually be... Boxing Day that I come out of um, come out of isolation. Oh. So yeah, I'm fast. So what? As as this has gone on over the last hour and twenty minutes, I'm I'm feeling progressively worse. My whole head, <laughs> yeah, my eyes is just like. Pull, pull, I was I was pull. hoping you'd turn around and say it was a tonic and it's made you feel more. Oh, listen, I'm, I'm quite happy to see everyone in the chat, and it, it's been nice to have a, a conversation and everything else. But I'm just like. Oh, right now, I don't know. I can't. The thing is, right? And if I don't know if she's watching, saying that I was acting like a typical man earlier, you know, moaning about it all the time, like, eh. yes, I feel like shit. You man know, flu. I mate, mean, I tell you what, I could deal with man flu. Um, oh, I could. As I said to you earlier, I this is exactly how I felt two years ago when I 
as I said to you, I felt I had it two years ago um, yeah. and I worked through it. This was before we knew what COVID was. Mm. And I worked through it. And this is exactly how I felt getting up to go to work um, for about a week in December back in 2019 before Christmas because yeah. um, we had no staff. I was run down, weren't getting enough sleep, all the rest of it. Not stopping to eat because I was doing, you know, 14, 16 hour days not enough staff and all the rest of it. I just put it down to being run down. Now I'm like, now I know what it is. So I'm just like, oh, and I, I don't even know how I managed it last time. I really don't. I'm on my ass right now. Not good. Not good. Well, like I say, we're going to have to find something to do. So we will. We'll, well, we'll, 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 we'll find a couple of. On, I think, I'll tell you what, we could probably, I don't know. What have, they, what have they got on on Saturday? We might do a couple of watch alongs. What do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, you've got, you've got. Um, I have to do something. You've got the games on Saturday. Oh, well, mate, there's three games on Saturday if they're not if they work it around. Oh, love that! Oh, it what madness? The madness? Suggs, I'm, I'm or is it? So. Is it a tribute? I'm, I'm guessing it's madness. I went to see Utter Madness. Yeah, I I went to see Utter Madness. You know the venue in New Cross. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the big V, the big V. That's, I'll yeah. tell you what, back in the day, oh, that yeah. used to be the place to go. That was great. Oh, if you wanted to see any tribute bands, I, I saw loads there over I the think years. I saw Robbie Williams, George Michael. Yeah. I think I saw an Elton John in there once. I might mm -hmm. have seen the Boot Bootleg Beatles, who are obviously yep. the, big, um, the, the big Beatles. Um, Killer Queen. Yeah, I saw all of them there. Used to Out of Madness. There every, every week. It was banging. Out of madness, I went to see, and my mate. I actually Paul... fell down all the stairs. Got pissed one night. <laughs> you know the fire escape where you come out on the um, on the side of the road, didn't you? Yeah. yeah the, the little side road. Fell yeah. down them fucking stairs, like from top to bottom, gate seat. I was Ooh. absolutely I didn't hurt myself. I was bladdered. I woke up the next morning thinking I've been in a fight with Tyson. It. But um, literally, I'm I rolled. Boy. Chong, 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 all the way at the bottom, and then at the fire escape door as well. Quite amazing. First single I ever got was Madness. Our house. That was the first single I ever got. As a Glenn kid. Medeiros, I think mine was. And that was, was it? my mum loved it. I bought it in Woolworths in Eris. Yeah. Woolworths. Glenn Medeiros. No longer Nothing of the high street. changed my love for you. And I still know yeah. the lyrics. Yeah. Nice. Mm. Nice. Quite sad, really. I, was, I, I would have been, oh, fuck, 11. Do you know the best, the best one? Andy. Oh, hang on. Andy. <laughs> <laughs> I liked him. I liked him. The best one I saw at the venue, um, tribute act. You know what was the Paul <laughs> Weller experience? But he made no attempt to look like Paul Weller at all. None. Right? You looked at this guy. He was short, dumpy, bald, completely nothing like Paul Weller. Nothing like him. Didn't no no short short yeah, short yeah, dumpy bald right. Um, didn't even try to look like Paul Weller. But I'll tell you now, if you closed your eyes, the moment he started singing, you would swear to God you was in the same room as Paul Weller. I, I, you know what? You say that. I'm, I'm a big Frank Sinatra fan. I love the country music, but I'm a big Frank Sinatra fan. And there's a guy out there called Stephen Triffitt. Now, if you guys hmm. in the chat are a Sinatra fan, we are going to Google that shit. Um, I put, I was sitting in the car connected to Bluetooth. My mum was sitting in the back and I put Stephen Triffitt on. I said, here, mum, listen to this. And he sang, I think it was Luck Be A Lady. Okay. And I let it play. And um, she was like, that's, that's Frank. That's not, that's a, that's a tribute. Now, don't get me wrong. He is the world's best tribute. In fact, he he currently, or has been for the last, I'd say 10 years. Hmm. I'd say 10 years. He's currently been playing Frank in a um, eight-month stint in Vegas. Hmm. The Life and Times of Frank Sinatra. He actually plays Frank in this show, and he was hand-picked, hand-picked, by Frank's daughter Nancy to play the role of her dad in this stage show about Frank Sinatra. That's how good it is. And she says, it's like watching my dad. 
that that's her words. Wow. And you you listen, you you ain't gonna get a better, a better compliment than that, are you? You know, the, the no. guy is outstanding. If you guys in chat like a bit of Sinatra and all that, Stephen Triffitt. Um, he does the stage show, the Rat Pack. Gangsy, you might remember this. There was a certain, mm. uh, there was a certain striker that used to play for us, um, yeah. and uh, there was a CD that was released by a certain Mark Adams. You're on that, about uh, uh, Zamora. Yeah, when the ball's in the net. Yeah, when yeah, when, when, yeah. and the, and, um, the, and the B side. I don't know if you remember the, the B side. Do you remember the B side? <laughs> I, I, I've it was it, it was a song that was a play on Teddy Sheringham. Oh, was it really? Mm. I've got it somewhere. Yeah, when the ball's in the goal and it's not Joey Cole, that's Zamora, wasn't it? That was something uh, like that. And yeah, that, that was a, that was by a guy called Mark Adams, who is the uh, the number one D Martin. And they're, they're actually when they do the Rat Pack show together, they actually you've got him as D Martin and Stephen Triffitt as um, as Frank Sinatra, and they are brilliant together. They really are good. Um, I've seen the show so many times. I, I when I when I go watch them. Um, they don't only just sing the songs, but when if you go and watch certain things on YouTube, you can find the stage shows that the Rat Pack used to do. So Frank yeah. Dean, Sammy, they do that. They do that as well. They do the little comedy skits in between as well. And obviously, I've listened to the CDs of this. Um, yeah, there you go. Um, I <laughs> you, I you remember it, it Brendan? There's a fucking grave. I've got it somewhere. I think he sang it in the middle of the pitch at one point. He I did. do believe he yes. was in the middle of the he was in when the, was in the championship under Pardew. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can't remember. Was, was that, that the first season? Or was, I think it was the second season. I think it was the season we got promoted when we beat Preston. I don't think it was the first season yeah, when yeah. Alice done a, <laughs> uh Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that was it. Yeah, Russ Budden mentioned that, that he, he didn't know. He didn't know the words to bubble, so he was just. Uh, but it's like I'm not being funny. It's you know I'm forever blowing bubbles. It's it's not. I know it's Iconic. a song that's associated with us, but it's a song that goes back many, 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 many well, years before we even adopted it ourselves. There is there is a there is a uh, you know, Dean Martin used to do um, the Dean Martin TV show. Yep. And there is a video on YouTube of Dean Martin lounging on a sofa. On stage at this um, on this TV show that he used to present, and he sings bubbles. He actually I sings. I think oh, forever blowing bubble, and it's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. If you literally get off of here, Gacy, go Google it, and then um, drop me a message afterwards because it's actually yeah, fantastic. I'll have some of that. It does it really well? Does it really well? Yeah. Right. Oh, hello. Yes. Yes, she did, Kent. Yes, I've heard that one. Yes. And of course, she was a West Ham fan herself. Listen. So was Henry VIII, according to Ralph Garnett. Well, he was a spud, wasn't he? Well, Warren Mitchell was. Alf Garnett. Yeah, Alf Garnett Garnet was a West Ham, but no, he was a, yeah. he was actually a spud, wasn't he? Warren Mitchell. Garnett. Yeah. Someone sent that me that broke clip. my heart growing up when I heard that. When you found out that, that yeah, he was a stud. It pissed me off. Really pissed me off. Well, that me. It's just a role he plays, isn't it? He played it quite I well. What, I came across a joke earlier. I was I was I was clicking through um might have been TikTok, I think. Um and I came across uh, Jim Davidson's um mm. profile on TikTok. And there, there's a whole video skit of him with Jeffro. Obviously, Jeffro. Oh, passed he's away passed away, didn't he? Yesterday. Um, was yeah. it yesterday or the day before? Um, there's actually a scene of him on, I think it was the Generation game. And um, Jeffro, it, it, I'll tell you what, it's really corny, but it had me absolutely pissing myself. He's, um, he's going, yeah, my, uh, my wife, she's, um, my wife stood by me for the last, uh, my, my wife, my wife stood by me for the last 21 years, Jim, but that's only because we've only got one chair. Gacy, right, when I listened to him do that joke earlier, I was pissing myself, right? I was at, because it was just, it's a genuine joke, isn't it? It's not a blue one. It's not, no. there's no swearing involved. It was genuine comedy, yeah. you know, and it's a funny joke. And my wife stood by me for the last 21 years, but it's only because we've got one chair. I absolutely pissed myself. I thought it was brilliant. One of the best jokes I've heard. I think, I don't know, it might have been because COVID was kicking in and I think I might have. Yeah, say, saying about COVID, if you 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 were about they've they've apparently found COVID in animals now. 
Yes. You heard this. Yeah, mate, mate of mine's mate of mine's got a horse, and apparently the horse got um her horse got COVID. It's in a stable condition now. You're such an ass, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> they can. Animals can catch it because the first go round last year, um, it was proven that tigers could catch it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. the my, 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 my wife was just squawking in the background saying about hippos getting it, and it's only because she, uh, you know her and mother she got got it, it, that she knows, you know. Oh. So. Love you, guy. She just told me to go away, but one of the words was off. Mm. That's not mm. very friendly, is it? No, but I can understand it. Mm. Fair enough. Should we uh, knock it on the head there, mate? Yeah, I'm going to go take a handful of pills and just dive yep. under me duvet, I mean, and just crying guys you know what to do you know the drill i shouldn't have to tell you but i will copy and paste it it's in the description below youtube and facebook on your social media platforms but just giving links there this little girl needs our help and she needs it now not tomorrow not next week not next month now so if you've got a couple of quid doesn't matter how much it is if it's a pound fine if it's five pound fine whatever it is just giving links there crack on do it now don't muck about Thank you very much indeed for your support. And please don't forget to like, comment on, share the stream, subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit the bell icon for alerts on new content. And as always, guys, we thank you very much indeed for your support. Duke, despite a disappointing performance yesterday um, and a not great result, um, what are we? I, I still believe we're fucking massive, Casey. I do. Yeah. I do believe we're still fucking massive. And I still think that um, uh, a very good season is still there to be had. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Come on, you irons. And guys, don't don't be catching COVID like the big fella has. It's not good. <laughs>